Hey guys, Brian Henderson here with Liberty Laundry. This is the fourth video in my series of videos about how to use SketchUp to design a laundromat. So, to pick up where we left off last time, we looked at how to import equipment, how to move it around, how to move the camera around, as well as using the 3D warehouse to import other people's components into your own model. So let's talk today about how to use the tape measure tool. It's all well and good to be able to draw equipment to scale, but it's um, kind of useless if you're not able to take measurements uh, from that. So that's where the tape measure tool comes into play. So first, let's bring a few pieces of equipment into this picture here. I've already saved some components that I've previously drawn. So let's say, let's get some 20 pound washers into here and maybe uh, put them next to some 30 pound washers and a couple of 60 pound washers. Oop, looks like I need to rotate this one around. There we go. So, I want to duplicate this and create a couple of these. One way of doing that is you can just simply select it and hit Control C and Control V. Pretty standard way of copying and pasting an item. Again, using the Move tool right here or pressing M on your keyboard, you can click on the corner here and it'll snap right to that other corner and I'll want to move it a quarter inch away, just like we talked about in the last video. Um, I could click this and so click it once, lift up your finger, and then type in 0.25 or 1 quarter inch like that. See in the bottom right corner? And then hit enter. All right, so I've got two of these. Let's say I want a third one. Another way of copying items in SketchUp is while well, having the move tool uh, chosen and an item chosen, you can hit uh, control just once and then click a corner and that creates a duplicate copy. I'm going to move this over a quarter inch, just like that. Okay, let's say in our laundromat we lined up the backs of all the machines. Other people like to line up the faces, but we like to line up the backs. It really helps it stand out uh, the different sizes of equipment. So again, using that move tool, it's definitely your friend. And it looks like SketchUp is already guessing how far I want it to go. I love SketchUp and the fact that it predicts quite a bit about what you're trying to do, which makes it great for beginners. Again, I'm going to hit Control, I'm going to click on this corner, and it just duplicated that. Click this corner, move it over, quarter inch, sure enough, the bottom right corner says it moves over quarter inch, and I'm going to do it one more time, Control, click on over, right there, and then scoot that over a quarter inch. Using the select tool, I pressed the space bar to get to that so quickly. I just selected that. Now I'm going to use the move tool or hit M. And now I can slide this on over. And again, lining up the backs of the equipment. I'm going to bring that right over to this corner. And then scooting over a quarter inch. If you're not sure exactly how I made these models of these equipment, how I'm moving things around, uh, please check out my previous videos in the series of YouTube videos. This is part number four, I believe, in this series, so I'm kind of jumping a few steps here. So if you're lost, uh, well, don't, don't worry too much. Okay, hit control again, click this corner, line it up there, and then scoot it over a quarter inch. All right, so we have all of this equipment. And why did it draw it this way? Well, this is exactly how we have one bay of equipment in our newest store. So I thought it'd be a good example. We have the machines drawn to scale. We have a quarter inch gap in between each piece of equipment as recommended by the manufacturer. So how wide, how long is this bay of equipment? Well, that's where your tape measure tool comes in handy. Uh, the tape measure tool is great for measuring distance between objects as well as drawing guiding lines. So if I were to simply click on an edge and draw it out here, see how it's trying to form a guiding line? Well, I can get that to line straight up with this if I want to. And now if I wanted to have any other piece of equipment in perfect alignment with these other things, I could simply um, here, let's choose this one, select that, 
and in this case hit copy and then here hit paste but say I wanted to get it right along that line but way over here sorry about moving the camera around so much click this corner and it's going to snap right to that guideline do you see that very handy and I know it's in perfect alignment with those other things okay so those are the guidelines but say I want to measure the length of this well one way to do it would be to grab the tape measure tool click this corner and then drag it over to this corner look at the bottom right corner there and also it just popped up on the screen 19 feet 6 and 7 eighths inches I wish it gave fractions sometimes, I mean, gave decimal numbers sometimes, but it likes to stick to fractions, which is just fine. I'm sure there's probably some setting uh, in the options where you can change that, but anyway, so um, I could write that down, or another option is I could use the line tool right here, click here, and then click right here, and that just drew a line. And what I'm going to use is go to Tools, Dimensions, and now I can click on that line I just drew and there you have it right in your model the dimensions of that this right here the dimensions tool is what allowed us to communicate with our builder exactly the dimensions of the equipment we were using and what sizes and shapes we needed okay so let's say I've got this entire bay of equipment I want something that's identical to it just back to back with it and I want to draw the drainage trough that goes in between it all. I'm going to delete that and get that out of the way. Well, one way of doing that, now I can't just select all this, right-click it and group it, and then um, Control-Paste it over here. I mean, I can, but when I um, rotate it so the faces are facing the correct way, well, all, all of a sudden I've got my 60 pounders over here and 20s over there. I didn't want that at all. So I'm going to have to do this by group, most likely. So let's explode this. Let's choose these three pieces of equipment. I'm holding down Shift to select each of these. Let's make that into a group. I'm going to choose these three pieces of equipment, make that into a group, and then these two pieces of equipment, make that into a group. And the reason why is I can now select this, Control-C, Control-V, copy and paste it and now I can rotate this around same with this copy and paste and because it's a group I can rotate them all around together and then same with this as well control C control V that as well another way I could have done this was to import every single time but that's kind of tedious okay so how do I line this up with this well that gets us back to the our guiding lines right I can choose my tape measure tool choose this edge kind of pull out a little bit and just snap right back to there and now I have a line with that what if I want the backs of the, this equipment exactly three feet from the backs of this well I could use the tape measure tool or I can hit T on my keyboard to jump straight to it I can click an edge along here and then as I draw it out I could simply at this point in time instead of trying to move it while I'm watching the length in the bottom right corner I could type in exactly three feet enter and I know that's exactly three feet so this is three feet out right here and then this line is lined up with the edge here so what I can do this is already selected choose the move tool click this corner drag it right to that corner it's exactly where I want it to be I know these pieces of equipment already one quarter of an inch from each other I'm going to choose this group, choose the Move tool, slide it on over, click this corner, drag it over to here, and now move it over a quarter inch, 0.25 inches. And then same with this. I'm going to move this on over. I'm going to grab this corner, slide it right over here, and then slide it over a quarter of an inch. And once again, SketchUp was guessing exactly where I want it to be. Okay, so there you have it. That's <laughs> real quick and dirty, but that is uh, two perfectly lined up bays of equipment, three feet in between. Um, 
you know, tell me in the comments what what sort of dimensions do you like for your drainage troughs? <laughs> we uh we we put three feet in between ours at this new store because we could. We wanted to be comfortable. I'm a pretty big guy. I'm six foot two, and I do a lot of the maintenance myself. And so it's nice to be able to climb in there. So let's go ahead and draw the drainage trough while we're at it. We've got a couple of minutes. Let's do that. So let's say we want it about oh. Let's make it 24 inches wide, just because, in this example, it doesn't have to be, but this is just a good example. Um, I want to get, I want to have it lined up right in the middle of all this, though. So, let's draw a little line, using the line tool or hitting L, from one corner to the next. The reason why we do that is we can now, it snaps to the midpoint whenever we're trying to draw something. In this case, we're going to draw a guiding line right at the middle point there. And I said I wanted it 24 inches wide, right? Well, I could then click here, go out 12 inches, and then click here, go out 12 inches. I don't remember off the top of my head the actual dimensions of the drainage trough of our newest store, but oh well. And then let's go in, oh, I don't know, six inches here. Enter. And then let's draw another little line right here and go in another six inches. You can really get crazy with the guiding lines. <laughs> but now that I have these in place, I can use my rectangle tool. Just click that corner on over to that corner. And now I can use my push pull tool or I can hit P to jump straight to it and see how it's made a surface there that I can now just sink on down into the ground, however deep you want it to be. Um, let's make it, I don't know, 12 inches. That's pretty deep but useful. Okay, and I've got all these guiding lines everywhere. I've got my trough where I want it to be, but I don't need all these guiding lines anymore. Then you'll use the erase tool. That's this right up here, or you can hit E, and you just click and drag across what you want to delete. It'll highlight it in blue, and it'll, bring it, and it'll just delete them just like that. All right, let's say if I need to get those dimensions of that trough to the builder, how do I do that? Well, okay, Let's go to Tools, Dimensions, and now I can just choose that line right there. Well, it's being stubborn. There we go. Two feet wide, and then if I want that, one foot deep. Pretty nice, right? And then if I need that, well, I can do that as well. And that, shown right there, looks like we drew it 18 feet and 7 1 inches wide. Thanks for watching.